the past couple of summers, I have worked at the American School in Switzerland. And on a weekend off this past summer, I decided to visit my friend Crinin, just outside of Barcelona. I had met Crinin the year before, while we were both taking our gap years in Senegal, West Africa. I took an early flight and then a train to her countryside village. I got off the train at the last stop in the middle of nowhere. Almost no one stood on the platform either. Only five men, five black men sitting on a bench. I approached them and they kindly dried off a seat on the bench for me. As I sat waiting, hoping that Crinan would show up, I listened closely to their banter. And after a few moments, I realized I understood their conversation. But they were not speaking English or Spanish or Catalan. They were speaking Pular, a language spoken across West Africa and the language that I had learned in Senegal. I couldn't believe it. So I mustered up the confidence to ask them in Spanish if they were speaking Pular. When they said yes, I greeted them in Pular. Now they couldn't believe it. And so we started talking and connecting the dots of an American kid alone in Catalonia and a few Senegalese guys waiting around for a train. The world was suddenly very small, and we had built a bridge of commonality in a place where we were all strangers. So I'd like to talk to you about bridges. Bridges are structures that connect two separate entities. Bridges make it possible to cross deep ravines of obstacle and difference. Sometimes, bridges suspend over vast abysses of things unknown. Bridges are for crossing, that help us sojourn the rift between familiar places and strange ones. But bridges are also for jumping. You don't have to just cross the ravine. What if you chose, despite unfathomable fear, to jump from the bridge and free fall, to plunge into a state of liminality in which you no longer belong to your original place, nor to the destination to which gravity is hurling you. The essence of liminality is to put yourself between places. Achieving a state of liminality, a feeling of non-belonging, isn't always a choice. It may not have been for the men I met on the platform in Catalonia. But for me, Finding liminality had to be wholly intentional. As a middle-class white kid from a nice suburb, the vulnerability that characterizes such a state doesn't really exist. I went to school essentially on the same road for my entire life, State Route 161, also known as Dublin-Granville Road. I attended elementary school, middle school, and high school on 161. And by chance, 161 is the road that leads to Denison. This road, where my formal education took place, is solid ground. It's the foundation of who I am and the seed of my education. Given the predictability and the safety of the road, it made sense that I would stay on this road never between places, never foreign. Until I decided to jump. I discovered bridges where there seemed to be none. I managed to obtain a global education while attending schools on only one road. There, I found the resources to build a global curriculum that no one prescribed. Because of Rotary Youth Exchange, I spent a summer in Ecuador. And the progressive framework of my experiential high school 
guided me back to Ecuador, this time to work with indigenous communities in the Amazon. I found myself standing on a bridge, 125 meters above a stream below, at the cleave of a rocky canyon. I jumped. Jumping allows you to move through a threshold of self-actualization that enlivens you and enables you to connect and shrink the world. After that jump, I knew I had to return to the road and that the next bridge I crossed would be much bigger. I had lost the fear of falling into a gap and instead embraced the liminality that would change me. I joined Global Citizen Year, which calls itself a bridge year program, a transitional launch pad. With the help of a scholarship, I spent eight months living in Senegal before college. My chance meeting with those Senegalese men on a summer day in Catalonia is the culmination of building and crossing many bridges. Structures rooted in the consistency of a road that might have remained uncultured if for fear of jumping. But saying yes to opportunity and living every moment guided by the question, what would you do if you weren't afraid? I, what one classifies as a colorless person from a generic, demographically monolithic community, leveraged my circumstance and found a way to see the world. I urged people like me to ask, how can I integrate into the vast variety of humanity? When the answers to this question lay behind closed doors, knock louder, refuse the answer no, and seek ways to say yes. Make yourself and others afraid, and then live out that fear into growth and success. Return to your roots, your root. 161 did not lock me in, it raised me up, and I returned to 161 again to share that the most ordinary of people can blossom with color and voice. Thank you.